for Neil Duggan, Managing Director of CoreSmart International. Welcome to the London Book Fair podcast. Thank you very much. CoreSmart was founded in the States in 2007, but it's launched in the UK and Europe only this year. So many people won't be familiar with it. Just explain in a nutshell how it actually works. CoreSmart is a rental-based digital textbook platform which is focused on the needs of the higher education market. It was set up in 2007 in the US by five publishers, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Wiley, Cengage and Macmillan. And I'm working with those publishers in the international markets to roll the platform, to, to roll the platform out here too. Um, clearly the platform works with all other publishers in the US and we work with all other publishers here too. So it's an open platform for all publishers in HE to work um, on, on digital textbooks. So CoreSmart is a cloud-based, browser-based e-reader that works across every platform that you could possibly think of. One of the great things about CoreSmart is that it really is an open access platform. It's, uh, the reader is in the browser uh, and it's a web-based e-commerce site. So really it works with any, any device or technology the student has. So you can use it on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your laptop or on your PC, Mac or PC. It works with, really, really works with anything. Now, your US catalogue includes about 90% of the textbooks that are in use on American campuses. Uh, you've only just begun uh, in the UK. So, how much will anyone enrolling this autumn for college benefit from CoreSmart? Since we, we set up um, last year, we've been working very closely with all the publishers in the HE sector. We've been talking with them and explaining the platform and the benefits of the platform to them. Um, so, uh, and many publishers have signed up with us already. And those publishers are really focusing on giving us their best-selling books and their frontless books. So I'm actually very confident that we will have a substantial offering to students when it comes to back to university this, this year in the UK. Um, our US catalogue is really a big strength of ours. We have 90% of core textbooks, but we also have a lot of other books across reading lists. And I'm aiming to have a very similarly um, attractive and broad catalogue here in the UK. It's always thought that academic publishing is streets ahead of, of consumer publishing. You've come from consumer publishing into the world of academia. How does it look from where you sit now? Well, actually, um, when I entered the uh, academic side of publishing, I was surprised to find that the educational side is not as digitally advanced as the consumer side is yet, certainly in the UK and Europe. Um, the consumer side is clearly growing very, very quickly, and that's spilling over into the education market. But there are other stakeholders involved in education, including the institution and, and the faculty member, who both have to really engage with digital, and we're working with all of them to engage with digital to push the market forwards. There appears at present to be many fewer humanities titles, much heavier on, on sciences and so on, and social sciences. Is that because subjects such as English, history, music, almost by definition, rely on more than just a few key texts? The publishers that we're working with have so far focused on giving us the core textbooks around those really big um, primary subjects. So maths and the other science subjects and the big business subjects. But that shouldn't deter publishers from looking and working with us on other subject areas too. Uh, we aim to, be, um, to offer what students want across all the disciplines. Um, and certainly as we, as we begin to work with more and more publishers, we will be able to offer areas where there might not be just one or two core textbooks, but there might be a broader reading list involved. And we do aim to offer books across those disciplines too. The big gain in digital terms is cost, isn't it? Because textbooks are very expensive, students are now going to be paying much higher fees. Course Smart means a real money saving for students. But it is a big cost saving for the students. We offer up to 50% off the cost of the physical book. Right. Um, and that's for rental access, which could be for a year. Um, so, so from the student's point of view, this is the first time that they've been able to go and get access to um, a substantial number of core textbooks at a 50% off price. Now some subjects it seems to me will be greatly enhanced in ebook format. I mean medical textbooks you can have exploded diagrams, music you could have um, musical examples, the Tristan Chord for example. What are the benefits, what are going to be the enhancements that students will, will find really useful? So I think that's a great question and there are tons of, of advantages to the digital textbook that we offer even without an enhancement in interactivity. So the student can, uh, can buy the book from anywhere at any time and they can access the book from anywhere at any time. But also you have utility built into the platform so it's around searching through an 800 or 1000 page book 
uh, finding you know, resources for a particular essay you're writing. It's also around note taking. So inside the book you can do very sophisticated note taking. You can copy bits of the text into your notes. Uh, you can navigate through your notes. You can effectively write your essay inside the book or your, your homework assignment inside the book and export that out of your notes. You can bookmark as well. You can print out of the book. Uh, in the UK you can print 50% of the pages of the book. So if you need to print out a diagram and scribble it over it and stick it on your notice board, you can do that too. Um, so there really is a lot of utility built around the platform itself. Do you think that over time the widespread adoption of e-textbooks will lead to a reliance on a decreasing number of books and therefore ultimately more narrowly focused students? What I've observed in working in digital in the trade side and also previously in music is that as the digital market takes off, you end up with um, the ability to buy, buy long tail books in a much more frictionless kind of way. So the digital marketplace brings in itself great efficiencies into, into the supply chain and distribution of these materials. And so you can end up with a broadening of the catalogue rather than a narrowing. So what I would fully expect to see is that as digital becomes a very core part of academic curriculum, that, that instructors have a, a wider range of materials to choose from and not a narrowing. Do you think there is an argument to say that with e-textbooks students are slightly more spoon-fed uh, and that rather like the students taught by Irwin in The History Boys, they're taught to pass exams rather than taught to actually learn? The wider availability of digital resources will stimulate students' curiosity. Um, we already see them looking at a very broad range of digital resources online um, and the fact that they can access their materials externally, even now they can log into the library resources from anywhere, I believe will help students, will help instructors direct students towards a, a wider uh, reading list. What do you think are the likely consequences of a decline in print books? As publishers in the education space move from physical to digital, there are enormous benefits for everybody to reap. Uh, it really is all about enhanced learning outcomes at the end of the day. Uh, and as publishers manage to, to include rich media that we've spoken about and the interactivity into these course materials and make them available for students to access remotely and through any kind of device, I believe that it's really going to be a big opening up of, of education uh, if, you, if you think about it from a publisher's point of view. If you think about it from an institution's point of view, institutions now have the ability to reach distance learners really anywhere they want. So their, their, their digital campus can be very broad and actually quite, quite a global campus. So there's, a, there's also the potential opening up for institutions in terms of the way they can teach courses and distribute course materials and manage a kind of globally spread. Now you've just announced a partnership with Blackwells. How will that work and what does it mean for Blackwells itself and for students? Well, I'm, I'm really excited about the partnership with Blackwells. Um, Blackwells is, is, a, is an enormously um, prestigious and leading academic bookseller in the UK and I'm delighted that we were able to, to, to do this deal with them. Um, book, uh, sales through the book channel in the, in the US are very significant for us. Uh, we sell through over 1,000 bookshops in the UK independent campus bookshops in the US uh, and, and that's, that's very important to us. Now you studied experimental physics at Trinity, you followed it with an MBA, you've worked in the music business for EMI at Abbey Road, you've worked for Random House and consumer publishing and now you're working for CoreSmart, an academic publisher. That's a very rounded experience. What does it mean that you can bring to this particular role? Well, uh, one of the things that I've observed is that however much we get excited about technology, and technology is a sort of driving force, people don't, the mass market does not buy technology. The mass market buys content and utility. So to succeed in a digital marketplace, you have to really think about what your consumers want, what they do daily, what, what they've got now, what their choices are, and how you can make things better for them with technology. Now you, you were in, in the music business with EMI when digital was very new before anyone really knew what it meant. We've learned a lot since then, but what can you take from that experience? What do you bring from that experience to Core Smart? The early days of digital music were very uh, enlightening and, and, and looking back and learning from those lessons. Um, that, that was a very um, sort of, it, it was the very beginning of, of a lot of the wars which have subsequently been, been, been fought and on our close, our much closer to resolutions, for example, the concept of digital copyright and territoriality, which around the time of the beginning of digital music were, were really unknown and they really were up for grabs. However, now we have established firmly um, that 
uh, digital territoriality exists and also um, digital copyright can be protected um, uh, so that authors and publishers are able to be paid. Uh, one of the characteristics of a successful transition to digital for any media industry is that the content owners fully engage with the distribution channels in order to present these options to consumers. Uh, digital music companies did not engage at the beginning, but the consumer publishers were engaged magnificently and responded to the new digital channels that opened up to them. One of the consequences of this was that digital piracy was not embedded as a consumer practice. So the trade market for consumer ebooks grew and continues to grow, uh, and which is a wonderful thing for the publishing industry generally. Looking at the academic market, one of our challenges is to get this engagement uh, with, with publishers, and we are getting this engagement um, with, the, uh, with the digital books in PDF form, but also in terms of working with all the stakeholders to make sure that the, the huge benefits of digital are able to be pulled out and passed on to the students and to the institutions um, who are involved, and also to the faculty. Vanilla Duggan, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.